Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic at Trade Group, and it is Wednesday, June 2nd. So another, uh, for lack of a better word, interesting day that we have on our hands. Risk disclaimer in front of you. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. This video is for education purposes only. Yes, interesting is one way to describe it. Um, you know, basically theme of the day, anything with short interest went higher. Um, but, um, you know, there was obviously some, some other names too without that high short interest uh, that just went went up a lot too. Um, I think um, what Blackberry is maybe one of those names. I didn't check the short interest in that one, but very, very heavy speculative uh, activity today. Um, you could see the overall market. Um, S&P really not much to really talk about with the S&P, you know, other than it's been extremely sideways. It seems to really love this 4,200 level. It really seems to like not be able to kind of get out of this range. Um, but of course, you know, we are seeing some decent moves under the hood. Um, today, of course, the flavor was, you know, continuation from what we saw with, um, you know, the likes of AMC and, and some of the other stocks. Um, just really um, igniting. Uh, so we'll go through a couple of those moves, but you know, it's anything, you know, I mean, it's kind of, to me, um, you know, it's kind of odd that it's just anything that speculative in nature, you know, with a smaller float that can kind of be pushed around. Um, let me just turn on uh, labels here on the market webs indicator, just so that we've got some levels that I could give you. But, you know, we've been just considering, con continuing to stay around this this 4208 level as well as um, 4210 so those are two levels that we just continue to kind of trade around and um, you know it's going to be interesting how this um, there's that word again interesting but it, it is um, going to be uh, you know definitely interesting to see if we can kind of break out of this um, out of this range and actually go someplace right we've kind of explored both the upper range the lower range the lower range a couple times and just have been kind of sitting here the last two weeks I mean this is really getting uh, pretty tight price action you know that should probably come up you know if we continue to kind of you know today's Wednesday we've got two more days of the week but the the um, the value area for next week you could see it's very tight this week but it's going to be super super tight next week and you know if we don't get some type of a move next week I don't I'm not one to really make a lot of predictions but I think next week you really get you should see this um, you should see the, the overall index move uh, because it will be quite coiled right we know that when things kind of get stay bottled up and coiled that eventually they do break one way or another so you know I don't know perhaps maybe putting on some type of a strangle type trade um, you know out of the money right yes um, straddle is at the money strangle is, is out of the money you know uh, for possibly a big move that could be coming in the S&P you know again without looking at an event or anything like that but just noticing that, that this price action uh, you know, it's getting very tight. The queue's not much going on there either, too. Um, you know, just exploring both sides of that value area for the week. Remember, I'm on the one-hour chart here, just as I was in S and P, and you know, we're we haven't gone to the bottom of value, but we've been kind of, you know, capped right around that 42.10 level. And and the queues, um, you could see this this uh, you know the queues average. Same thing as last week. We just continue to kind of bounce around in a very tight range. So eventually, you're going to see a move out of here. Um, IWM, which has been the leader the last couple, you know, the last, uh, not just a couple days, but over a week now, um, stalled out a little bit today, was underperforming at one point, you know, right around the open, um, and then came back and essentially flat for the day. So you could see this VPOC that was taken out, version point of control. Um, we are also, also consolidating around that in IWM. So um, what about the, the underlying sectors? Um, PEJ, which is travel, leisure and travel, but you know the biggest name in this one is AMC. So um, you know, that uh, definitely got pushed around by the price action there. Other than that, you know, second day move for the energy stocks. Remember, we get the Department of Energy numbers tomorrow, but big move for OIH up over 7% for the day and um, XLE up 2% for the day. 
Uh, where's where's XOP? XOP up 1.6. So what, what was the driver in OIH that was so strong versus the other? Maybe slum, Slumber's A? Uh, let's see if I can bring up the movers here in OIH. Um, a couple names. Neighbors was up 15%. SLCA was up 14%. Wow, a lot of names. A lot of names in that group up over 10%. So you had um, 11 names that were up over over 10% in the OIH, so very strong there. Um, clean energy stocks did okay today too. Pot stocks, you know, some names with some short interest in there too, getting going. Um, and then there was a you know a number of areas that just uh, did not perform well today. Home builders, metals and mining, which have been strong, kind of took the day off. So some of those areas last uh, from yesterday were weak today. Um, you add to that the home builders. So you know, I I think that. Um, you know, I think there's some lessons to be learned. You know, I'm really not going to go into all these stocks that, you know, you name it with short interest was up anywhere from 10 to 30 percent. Some of them up more. Um, BBY was up 62 percent today. Um, you know, obviously AMC, where did this finish up? 95%. You know, what, what I would do is just kind of take a look at what happened. You know, I got, um, you know, one thing to, to kind of note, um, was and I, and I like this statement by the way I'm borrowing this tweet a little bit from these guys that you know um, Helene Meisler who I respect a lot on Twitter um, I think she's she's a great um, technical analysis as well as her overall market view she's always very objective so speculative markets are unstainable the they burn themselves out call call it too much of a good thing now I think you probably know from uh, what's this? Uh, what, what's the Fed saying? Fed says plan to wind on pandemic corporate credit facility. All right. Well, that's something that could get the market moving a little bit. Um, I'll take a look at what. Let's see what. Let's see if futures are doing anything on that move, on uh, that headline. Not that much. Not that much. I'm just going to throw this in the chat really quick. Um, those are what's known as red headlines on Bloomberg. Uh, so let me just throw this out here. Fed plans to wind down pandemic corporate credit facility, as they should at this point, right? Um, so let me get back to just the commentary. But, um, you know, again, I, I try to provide some value in these, in these end of day uh, videos that, uh, that, that I do. But you could basically look, right? I mean, there's a lot of people who... You know, I, I heard a lot of people did not do well, right? In the month of, you know, uh, February was troubling for some people. And, you know, I think if you look at how this GameStop ended, right? It peaked out at 483. It's still at 282. But, um, you know, this caused a major, you know, this caused a decent hiccup for the overall market, right? Is it going to cause another hiccup for the market with this, you know, kind of speculation running wild? I mean, it could. I think what we saw as a result from that is bond yields went up a little bit. So, you know, um, I would say the moral to that, and, and I'm not telling anybody, um, I'm not telling anybody what, you know, what to do um, because I'm not giving out any advice or recommendations, but just make sure that you, that you learn some lessons from a couple months ago, right? You know, all the rocket emojis and all that stuff. Um, to me, it's, it's, you know, you know, I've been through a lot of different trading markets and so forth, but to me, it's it's kind of nonsense. So I would say if you had a great day with all this stuff, I would say make sure you're you're locking in profits and learning from this chart from what you saw a couple months ago, because it went some of these things went down just as fast as as they went up. Now it's very difficult to play um, both sides of this. I still have a tough time with some of these things that people refer to as lottos, but I don't understand where people are coming up with, are, are using that term. You know, when I see option prices that are four or 500% implied volatility, some of them 800% implied volatility, I don't understand where you're getting, where people are getting lottos from. A lotto is, let me define a lotto for you really quick. 
Um, it's when you go to <laughs> to the convenience store, your 7-Eleven, you know, depending on where you're living, and you literally buy something for $2, right? So it's kind of the same thing. The, the term lotto is you're taking a very small bet. You don't care about it, right? So that could be like 100 bucks, right, in trading. I saw people like talk about, hey, I purchased, you know, a couple contracts of lottos. If you're spending $400 a contract or three or $400 a contract, that's not a lotto, right? That's a trade. Um, now, again, everybody has different thresholds that they can, you know, that they, that they could put down, um, you know, a particular bet, but that's, you know, that's not a lotto um, trade because I looked, you know, I, you know, this stuff is not playing these short squeezes is not really um, my thing per se, but if things are, you know, if 20 names are going to go nuts, I'm going to look for some opportunities. But I just found it very difficult to find names that, you know, even if you get into something for 50 cents, you know, you really had to be kind of holding into to today and, you know, having some positions in some, some of these things. But, you know, I just find it, I think, a lot more difficult than what you see Twitter, you know, talking about. Um you know, in terms of like, hey, I made ten thousand dollars on this. You know, you'd, I don't think people really turned a hundred dollars into ten thousand dollars. You know, maybe they turned. You know, you, you really had to kind of say, hey, I'm going to take a shot at this. Um, we also talked up, talked about this in yesterday's webinar, right? I associated, um, which I'm not going to go into this example now, but it's it's you know, I did give an analogy of playing craps, right? Um, you know, in my opinion, how I've done well with short squeezes and so forth is just continuously rolling your options, right? Um, putting some skin in the game, taking uh, profits, taking some money off, and then putting back a portion of your position, kind of like chips, like on a craps table, right? Um, you know, you have to continuously have some chips out there on the table, and eventually you know that you're going to kind of crap out, but you, you can, can, you know, as the person who's rolling the dice as they, you know, continue to hit their number, right? Um, what normally happens in craps and good craps players, what they do is they, they take those profits off the table, right? They leave that, the original chip on the table, but they continuously take their money off the table. So that's kind of what you have going on with short squeezes. But yeah, if I could try to add some value with, um, you know, what we're seeing right now in this environment, uh, and if you're a big part of it, you know, making money in this stuff, I, I would say congratulations to you, but make sure that you're learning something because um, I saw just too many people that were in pain from, you know, what transpired after all these things. Uh, and, and and I don't know exactly, you know, 100%, you know, every case is a little bit different, but I saw a lot of people lose money in, um, in February and March. And I think part of that was, you know, trading discipline um, and not really having a trading plan, right? Just thinking that, you know, things are going to basically, you know, go to the moon. And then when they didn't, you know, or, or they weren't trade, you know, they, you know, there's the other thing that this, this situation kind of creates is a ton of FOMO. Um, and I just, I don't think that that's a great way to trade. So, you know, that's my, <laughs> that's my summary for the day. I'll show you what I traded, but I, you know, I spent the better part of today kind of joking around with this stuff. Um, because I, I, you know, things like, um, you know, I was trading Nokia, right. And I was talking, you know, I was making fun about Nokia phones, you know, and about, you know, because I don't know what else you're really supposed to do with this stuff. Um, you know, stuff just going up for, for no reason whatsoever, other, other than short interest. Right. And, um, so I, again, make sure that, you know, you can joke around a little bit like I did today. Um, with some of these things that I, they're, they're not much more than like, you know, and, and I think there's a, there's a, there's a pretty big similarity between this and like Dogecoin, right? There's no real fundamental reason, in my opinion, for Dogecoin and some of the other cryptos that you could just kind of create. And it's kind of like the same thing with um, many of the stocks that were moving up today, you know, for huge squeezes. Um, Here's some of what I did today. Um, I tried, it's always a little bit tricky establishing a position right around the open. So what I've kind of changed, um, just another thing that I do around the open, considering these, these um, you know, 
while the overall indices are trading in a range, you know, I don't really get myself, um, whoops, overexposed on the open um, because we see a lot of fake outs, right? So I, I saw something nice on the open for PayPal, but it's just very difficult. And you could see it kind of gave it back. Um, so I see more or less a lot of this. Again, PayPal didn't have, um, you know, if PayPal had a big short interest, maybe it would have went up today. Um, that's just the kind of day that we're dealing with. So um, I took one target really quickly with this one, took um, and then just took the balance off. Um, it got back to cost basis. I, I kind of feel stupid for not just taking it off for the whole thing for eight bucks or traded a little bit higher than eight bucks. Um, Roadblocks, this is, you know, I talked about a couple names pre market. Um, Roadblocks was one of them, you know, right around 100 bucks. You know, this thing is continuing to kind of track above. Um, the short-term moving average here, right? So five-period moving average. Upstart was another one that we talked about. I didn't execute this one very well here at the end of the day uh, because there, there was a VPOC. There's right around the same level, multiple on multiple time frames, uh, you've got some resistance. So just wait for Thinkorswim to adjust here for a second. But you're going to see this VPOC actually, um, it should be right around this 157, 158 level. Let's see if it's not adjusting. Oh, yeah, if it's not a, uh, it's not adjusting to it. But at least I saw it earlier, a, a little bit different on my charts. But there it goes. There it is. Right. So notice that this 150 again, Thinkorswim. The reason Thinkorswim takes a while to crunch 180 days of data, but. So we'll see. I left a, a small position on. I had a tough, a tough time getting out of the position. I put on like an end of day trade, but it's close, right? 155 is the level to watch on the one hour chart. Also on the daily chart, you've got the 155. So really, if you're waiting for a little bit of confirmation, um, wait until maybe this thing gets above 157, 158 and see if this thing could then begin to run. But I wouldn't be surprised if it turns away from here. Um, Tilray was another one that I tried today um, just because everything was getting squeezed. Um, this thing actually did quite well. I don't have a lot of patience with this stuff because I don't have any conviction with it. But look at that. It took out the, um, the VPOC right at the end of the day, which is what I was aiming for. All right, so again, you know, the version point of controls really help with this stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll kind of we'll kind of end it there. Nvidia, maybe the last one we'll talk about. You know, I got the breakout in Nvidia that um, you know I've been rolling a position in that one too. Although I didn't roll my last position, uh, but this one was a nice profit for me today. All right, guys, um, have a great night. I hope that helps a little bit. It's it's tough to really kind of talk about um, this type these types of moves. Um, you know, unless you're really, uh, you know, really in love with a lot of these these high short interest names, and, and I, I kind of understand that a little bit. But for me, it's 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 tough because you know I look at short interest as just one of the factors to get into a trade, not the only reason to get into a trade. And it seems like right now that's what you have going on is that hey, if it's got big short interest, um, let's see if we can squeeze it. So. That's what's going on. Do I agree with it? No, but do I understand it or, you know, <laughs> know that it is what it is with sometimes with a, with a market? Um, yeah, so I'll leave it there. Have a great night. See you tomorrow, guys.